can't see clear Think I'm lost inside and the end is near It's just not fair Hey guys, it's 681Shadow. Welcome to another video on Smash Ultimate. So, um, last night from when I'm recording this, hopefully it'll go up uh, the night I'm recording this, um, we did get the patch for version 8.0.0 of Smash Ultimate. And there were definitely some very interesting changes. So, this video today, I'm going to be going over um, the patch notes, showing what changes there were, as well as, um, yeah, as, well as like, what some of these changes could mean. Like I've seen that over the past day, I've seen stuff, you know, stuff on Twitter. Um, I've had some gameplay opportunities. Also, I've used Min Min. I'll be having a separate video where I talk about Min Min and go through like your classic mode. Probably coming out tomorrow. I'll see what happens with uh, me recording and whatnot. But yeah, right. Yeah, I, I want to look at uh, all these adjustments here and give my sort of rundown. I wanted to do this for uh, version seven, but um, I ended up only doing just like a video about Byleth and then specifically Palutena because. I was actually kind of I was actually pretty sick when uh when version 7 came out. I was getting sick and so my voice wasn't like up to recording the video, but now I'm in the, now now I'm not sick for version 8, so I'm able to record this and let's just see, you know, let's just take a look here and we'll go through all of these changes. So let's up. So first up we're starting with Mario. So the only thing with Mario and se several characters had this sort of change is that his final smash got buffed. Uh, increased pa increased uh, damage and increased attack range for his final smash, which is good because Mario's, Mario's final smash is kind of mid, so it's good that his final smash was able to get um, some adjustments there for casual play. Because you know, like while I'm pretty into competitive play for Smash, I'm all for casual stuff, so that's definitely cool. Then next up, the first character with a bunch of uh, different buffs is Kirby. So Kirby got some stuff, which is pretty cool, you know. While Kirby is a low tier, I definitely do think you know, Kirby's got some combos. Kirby can put in some work if uh, if the player is willing to learn him and uh, commit to him. So let's take a look at what Kirby got here. So for Kirby, first off, Kirby's dash attack. Um, so dash attack has less um, has less end lag with the reduced vulnerability and also um, extended launch distance when hitting with the being of the of the attack. So if they're like point blank at you and you dash attack them, it's gonna do it's gonna send them a little further, which which could definitely be good. I think it's a similar buff to what Samus got last patch. So that's definitely gonna be pretty good. Then next up we have uh, down smash, which now has uh is which now comes out faster and uh, sends them further and uh, has more knockback. So Kirby down smash can definitely be pretty good. Um I don't actually know the hitbox of that move. It's probably not the biggest thing ever since Kirby, you know, pretty pretty small boy. But um, yeah, his that could be good for uh, down smash. That it comes out faster, a little bit of a faster option. Then next up we have the forward air being buffed, so increased power of the second and last attack, which can definitely be um, that exactly could definitely be good. So um, so the last couple of kicks will do a bit more damage. Cause I'm pretty sure it's a three it's a three kick move. So yeah, the, the first the first kick remains unchanged, and then um, extra damage from the second and third, and then extra launch distance of the last attack, which makes it better for edge guarding and better for killing um, off stage, which Kirby is very good at. You know, with him having uh, with having him having six jumps total, one off the ground and five midair. And then Kirby's back air has extended launch distance when hitting with the beginning of the attack, which uh, it, yeah. It's similar to the buffer dash attack, so if you hit um if you hit at the very beginning of like if it's point blank it hits at the very beginning of back air, it's gonna do um it's gonna send them a bit further with some extra knockback, which is nice. And then the last buff that Kirby got was his down B, which is the uh the rock. Which is uh extended which just got more knockback, which is definitely very interesting because that move is uh it looks kind of powerful. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's not like the most. It's not among the most powerful things in the game, but it's it's kind of powerful. You know, for, for for Kirby standards, it's kind of powerful. Then next up, buffs that I'm actually very happy about is Captain Falcon because um I'm not sure how many of you know, but I grew up you know playing melee and I still play melee even now. Like I got and I got back into melee recently with the uh, the new Slippy emulator with the rollback netcode, and seeing Captain Falcon get buffed in Ultimate. Um, within a, like a week later from Slippy releasing is honestly like really good. It's really fun to see because Captain Falcon in Melee is one of like the most fun things that I've uh, that I've done in Smash. That I've used in Smash Bros. In all honesty, but let's take a look at Captain Falcon. So 
First off, his dash attack has less end lag, which can be good because yeah, dash attack it, could, it it can kind of be used to approach. It, it can be an approach option, so definitely good that that has less end lag. Um, then his down tilt ha uh, sends further, which could be. Which I mean, I don't, I don't, I haven't actually really tested his down tilt too much because I I did play test Captain Falcon a bit. Yeah, it, I I didn't really test out his down tilt, but um, depending on the launch distance, potentially. It, it either combos better or worse into like aerial stuff, like maybe Nair or Knee. I'm not sure yet. But um, either way, that, 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 that could still be decent. Um, then Up Smash um, has extended knockback of the second attack, which I believe... I believe... Is it a 2-kick or 3-kick move? I actually don't know. But, but either way, get, getting special launch distance could be pretty nice. Maybe uh, working up for, for some other combo type stuff with uh, Falcon, who knows. But then Captain Falcon's side B, which is his Raptor boost, getting a, getting a big buff here, a bunch of different things that happened here. Um, so to start off, increased attack range. Um, yes, yeah, so increased attack range forward when used on the ground. So just more, more range for Raptor boost. Adjusted the launch angle when used on the ground. This is big because um, myself and I think someone else from uh, from my college, we've I think we both like looked at it. Well, he looked at it first, and I looked at it this morning. Um, it seems like it's easier to go for Raptor Boost into Knee with Falcon, which is a fun, which is a fun little uh, conversion. So I'm definitely really happy about that. And if you get the Knee, then it could set up for a kill if you have them at the right percent. So definitely, uh, definitely do like that. And shorten the and also this as well. Same thing for Raptor Boost Knee. Shorten the launch distance when used on the ground. So that's also going to be really good for. Uh, for getting like Raptor boost into knee, maybe like Raptor boost into nair, or like Raptor boost into up air, and stuff like that. Because you can probably do Raptor boost into up air, into up air, into knee, potentially, to like extend that. And yeah, that could be definitely really good for killing. So Captain Falcon getting some more uh, kill options as well, with uh, Raptor boost becoming a combo tool. And then lastly, Captain Falcon's down special, which is the Falcon Kick, uh, comes out faster with the increased speed, and then. Um, more knockback when hitting in the high damage range. Actually, wait, hold on. I forgot for Raptor Boost one more time. Um, it's easier to trigger a meteor effect when using move in the air. Which it's not using the air too much, but that's that's still kind of good because it does have that spike. So that's definitely cool. But yeah, Falcon Kick definitely. Uh, yeah, Falcon Kick coming out faster and a bit more launch distance. I feel like this buff won't really do too much, but um, having Falcon Kick be a little better is still good. Next up, we have Jigglypuff. Just Jigglypuff's final smash. Getting uh, buffed because Jigglypuff's final smash is absolutely awful, and it probably still is. But um, the change is that uh, the opponent's movements are slower during the initial slowdown period. Okay then. And Ice Climber's final smash got a bunch of changes for some reason. I don't know why this this final smash got so many changes, but I mean, hey, more power to Ice Climbers and casuals, right? So, for the Ice Climber's final smash. Um, makes the opponent's movement slower during the initial uh, slowdown period, so same as Jigglypuff. Uh, increase the speed at which the iceberg will appear, so the iceberg will appear, for, will appear faster, it seems. Um, and it increase attack and it increase attack range near the peak of the iceberg, and it makes it easier to grab onto the condor. I don't actually know. I don't actually know what that means. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, because I don't use ice climbers, so I don't. I, I don't use ice climbers. I definitely don't use them in casual play. So like. I honestly don't know what that means. I didn't even know there was a combo you can grab onto, but I guess it's easier now. Okay. <laughs> so then next up we have Sheik, who just got one buff, which uh, could definitely be uh, it could definitely be cool. Um, for forward smash, which makes it easier to hit multiple times, so it makes it combo, it makes it link a little better, and uh, increase attack range of the second attack, so that because there's been times for like Sheik players where like they'll forward smash, they'll get the first hit but not the second hit. Now it'll be uh, easier to get that second hit to link with the first one, which is honestly pretty good. So yeah, definitely good for Sheik, uh, giving Sheik a more reliable F smash for uh, for possible kills. Then uh, Doctor Mario's final smash. This is really funny. Doctor Mario only got increased power. Meanwhile, Mario got increased power and um, yeah, and a better attack range. So. You do hate to see that Dr. Mario getting shafted compared to uh, regular Mario. You do hate to see that. All right, so next up we got some buffs for Falco, and I've actually actually um, have low key picked up Falco a little bit recently. Like I'm not really great with Falco, but like I know a couple things. Um, yeah, so Falco's down tilt 
has uh, it comes out faster now and it launches in a different angle. I haven't uh, compared the launch angles, but it probably is making it. It probably either makes it a better combo tool or something like that. So that's so that, that definitely still is good. Then Falco's up smash um, made it easier to hit multiple times, which is good because it has uh, the, the I think it's two different hits. Um, yeah, more knockback and then uh, more active frames because yeah, in increasing the amount of time hit detection lasts. That's that's talking about active frames. So the move will stay active for long for a bit longer, which is good. All right, so then Falco's Nair um, will increase the speed of the increases the speed of the last attack and uh, increases the range of the last attack. So the last attack will now have a bigger hitbox, is what it looks like. It's, it comes out faster and has a bigger hitbox. So that, that's definitely a good buff there for uh, Falco. Then for uh, Down Air, Down Air has less end lag and yeah, Down Air just has less end lag overall. Less end lag and then less end lag when landing after using this move. So if you're doing a landing down air, does, there's not as much end lag, which is pretty cool. And lastly, si uh, his side B, which is the uh, illusion, I'm pretty sure it's called. I think, is it called the illusion with all three? I think so. I mean, that's what I've been calling it. So I'm just going to say it, it's called illusion. If I'm wrong, you can let me know in the comments. But um, yeah, so for illusion, uh, there's, yeah, there's more hit detection, so uh, the hitbox stays out longer and. Yeah, that means more active frames, and then uh, the move comes out faster when used on the ground. So that's still pretty cool. Although I'm not too too sure why you would use it on the ground, but uh, I mean, hey, you do you do you Fal you do you Nintendo, you got that with whatever Falco players are on the dev team. All right, so next up we got Marth. So Marth got some actually pretty solid buffs because Marth's biggest is issue was the uh, inconsistencies with his zipper, and. Uh, we got that fixed here with uh, with a few of his moves. So, so for his down smash, um, his down smash has extended launch distance when hitting in the high damage range. So, in the high damage range is his tipper. So that's gonna be pretty good for down smash for you know like ledge mix ups and stuff like that. Even though you could also just up tilt, which is faster than down smash. But I mean, okay. Um, and then for forward air, back air, and up air. So, so like three, yeah, three of his like main aerials. Made it easier to hit in the high damage range, which is going to be really good for Marth to get those to get more reliable tippers because Marth does kind of rely on the tippers to kill because in a lot of scenarios where like if Marth misses a tipper at like a fairly high percent, he might not kill. Whereas you know Lucina, who's his Echo Fighter, who doesn't have tippers, would definitely be able to kill in those situations. So like Marth having a slightly easier tippers is going to actually be helpful for people who want to play Marth over Lucina. Me personally, I secondary Lucina, um, and while I'm not opposed to playing Marth, um, I just feel like the consistency is just a little easier and better for me. But um, I would still play Marth. Like, I am considering playing Marth in melee though, so I will still have to deal with tippers there. But yeah, definitely meaningful buffs for for Marth for sure. Then next up we have Mewtwo. Mewtwo got some buffs, which was uh, pretty interesting here overall. So first off, his back air, which is like it's kind of like a tail slop. Um, so extended launch distance, so it's going to have more knockback and uh, increased p uh, damage from the tip and the middle attack range areas of the tail, which I think those are the more sour spots. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't really use Mewtwo too much. He's kind of fun, but I don't really use him too much. So it's definitely cool that he has uh, some extra power on that and knockback. Then his up air is just extended knockback, nothing really too crazy on that. Um, it's another, like, it's an, I, think, I think it's another tail, tail slap type of move as well. All right, and then his down throw has uh, less end lag. So, yeah, so that means down. Yeah, something big with down throw that um, I think I believe I saw on Twitter was that um, if your opponent doesn't di right, you can do down throw into uh, forward air, and that can be a kill confirm at um, at like higher at high, at kind of high percents, like maybe around like a hundred at ledge or something like that, like eighty to hundred at ledge, depending on like character weight and stuff like that. So that can definitely be pretty good for you too. Alright, and then for his neutral B, which is Shadow Ball, uh, increased power when it's not charged. So that that could be good for because uh, you don't always like for characters that have a charge like type of thing. Like for example, like Samus, Mewtwo, like that kind of thing. They aren't going to always charge up their um, they aren't always going to charge up their neutral B like completely. So it's good to have a little bit more power when it's not charged. It, and an increased attack speed come out. It'll come out faster and has less analog there, which is pretty good. And then lastly, for Mewtwo, his up B. Reduces uh, has less end lag after landing and finishing the move, 
he's definitely good, so he doesn't get stuck in analog, which I don't know how much of an issue it was before the patch, but it still was definitely uh, pretty good that he got that. So then we got some Meta Knight buffs, which is pretty cool. Cause so uh, first off, for Meta Knight's Nair, it has uh, increased attack range, so bigger hitbox, which is going to be uh, pretty nice. Then his forward air has less end lag, and it'll it'll combo easier, which is definitely good for Meta Knight. Yeah, because Meta Knight, you know, with those multi hit moves that he has, he de you, you definitely want your multi hit moves to combo into each other, to uh, actually uh, link into each other, as opposed to. Uh, like doing a multi hit and they get hit by like one hit and fall out of the rest of the move. And then back air, similar thing, uh, easier to hit multiple times, which is very good. It definitely, yeah, I I think making moves more hit more consistently is a very good step for uh, for fixing some of the characters in this game. And then my my nice neutral B, which is a tornado. Uh, the hitbox lasts longer, which is definitely pretty good. I, yeah, I'm definitely definitely excited. Um, it's definitely a solid change for sure. And then his up B, which his up B can be a good kill option, so it's definitely good that, that got some buffs for sure. Uh, it made it easier to hit multiple times, so it links together. And then uh, adjusted the launch angle. I haven't really looked. At, I actually haven't tested Meta Knight out um, since the patch. I should probably do that, but yeah, the adjusted launch angle could be pretty solid. And then increased attack range of the second attack. That's also really good, so that um, it just makes it more consistent. Probably with the, uh, yeah, pro with all three changes together, I think that's, uh, if you hit the first hit, the second hit is basically just gonna hit. So, I think that's pretty good. I will have to test it probably, try out some Meta Knight, because Meta Knight, is, he's fun, but I'm not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm very good with him. Alright, so then we have Pit and Dark Pit um, buffs here. I'm pretty sure their buffs are the same. Yeah, their buffs are all the same. So, I'm just gonna read off of uh, the list from Pit here. Definitely some solid buffs for sure. So, for Pit, um, first off, his down tilt. Um, has an adjusted launch angle and shortened launch distance, so his down tilt now becomes a pretty solid combo tool. How you can you can like down tilt in, you can combo down tilt into like Nair, you can combo down tilt into like Nair into Fair, or you can combo into like Fair, um, or maybe maybe down tilt up air. So if down tilt up air could low key work, maybe like high percents. I'm not, I'm not too sure about that. I haven't tried that out, but I I did try out um, down tilt Nair and down tilt Fair, and both of those worked uh, pretty well. Alright, and then um, for Pit's Up Smash, extended the launch distance of the final attack. So the final hit of Pit's Up Smash will send them a little, f will send them a little further, which is nice. It's an extra knockback. Then Down Smash uh, just at the launch angle. I don't know. I'm not really too sure how much of a change, how much, how like, big of a change this is, but hopefully it's a good thing for uh, the Pit mains. And then for Pit's Up Air, Pit's Up Air got a bunch of uh, a bunch of stuff here. So Pit's Up Air comes out faster. Um, Different launch angle, um, extended the launch distance of the uh, of the last attack. Yeah, so extra knockback on the last attack, which can which will be good, make a kill a little better, and then uh, less end lag on the up air, which is uh, definitely really nice for uh, for Pit to be honest. Yeah, yeah, because Pit's hitbox, some of Pit's hitboxes are probably still uh, kind of janky as they were, so um, it's definitely good that um, it's definitely good that they got that they got that for uh, the Pit. And then Pit's get up attack, um, the the vulnerability for attacking when getting up now aligns with other fighters. I I didn't even notice that Pit's was somehow different, but I guess it was, and they fixed that. So Pit's get up attack, um, like probably data about Pit's get up attack is the same as other fighters, which I guess is good. You know, um, yeah, just make make everything. Uh, yeah, have a universal like have universal data for every character for get up attack, which is good. And then uh, and down B, which is the Guardian Orbitars, um, has less end lag. So yeah, you can use the Guardian Orbitars a lot faster now. Yeah, I, th I think it was a it was a decent uh, it was a decent change to that as well, a decently sized change to the uh, down B. But yeah, pits the pit the pits definitely getting buffs was uh, pretty good. Then Zero Suit Samus's final smash got um, got buffed with uh, extra hit detection. So yeah, Zero Suit Samus getting that. Uh, Extra game that that little teeny tiny uh, final smash buff. We we do love to see it. But then then we have a character that uh, got some stuff that I may not be the happiest about because uh, I've seen some Twitter clips and uh, this character is uh, it's kind it's kind of crazy now. So we got Ike here. So Ike's dash attack has extended launch distance, and Ike already does a good amount of damage, right? 
Yeah, I can. Yeah, I dash attack is extend the launch distance, so it's going to send even further. His down tilt has shortened launch distance, so down tilt can probably combo into the you know whether it be nair, fair, up air, something something like that. Um, his nair has extended launch distance and reduced the, the low damage range, so because of that, it's going to make nair the nair into up air confirm um a bit harder. Yeah, I, I've I've heard from people it's not it's still in the game, but um it's definitely a lot harder to get off now. And then, oh. Yeah, so then his forward air as well has less end lag, and it maintained the launch distance and increased power. So I, I'm not too sure what that means. It, um, oh, oh, oh wait, no, no, hold on, I got it, I got it. So it maintained the launch distance, but it has increased uh, attack damage. It has increased damage. Okay, so it's gonna do more damage, but it's gonna launch you the same distance. Okay. That's pretty good for forward air. And then his up B. His up B got buffed. I don't know why his up B got buffed. But, um, so first I've made it so the first attack upward does not get neutralized. So he has invincibility on that first attack. It will always, uh, go through when he goes up. Um, then extended launch distance of the final attack. And then adjusted the launch angle of the final attack. And I've seen this move kill at like 100. On like, I would say lighter, light to midweights maybe. I haven't seen it on heavyweights, but like, yeah, this is... This move is starting is kind of scary to get hit by um, if you're at like a decently high percent. So yeah, that's Ike. I'm not too yeah. Ike got buffed, which was uh, definitely interesting. Also, just gonna take a sip of water real quick because you know you gotta stay hydrated. As I tell you all in my streams, which if you haven't checked out my streams, uh, twitchtv six day one shadow. <sighs> all right, let's move on to Ivysaur. So Ivysaur just got a small little change here, basic movements. The uh, vulnerability for breaking falls forward and backward now aligns with other fighters. I didn't even realize Ivysaur, I, I wouldn't have even known that Ivysaur's, uh, that for Ivysaur was different, but once again, making certain like basic stuff universal uh, among all fighters is honestly a good thing, so I'm all for it. Next up, Diddy Kong. D Diddy Kong has a, uh, it, I think Diddy Kong got some interesting stuff, but there is one thing that is, uh, very important to talk about, which we'll get to as we go through here. So, first off is dash attack. Um, it made it easier to get all the hits of dash attack to hit, and then um, and, and then a bigger hitbox for the last hit of dash attack, which could be, definitely be good for Diddy, considering his dash attack. Uh, it could be a good approaching tool. For, at least from my experience using the character, I don't play Diddy that much, so uh, it might not be the best thing to do, but it could still be good for uh, getting some damage in. Then, um, for his, uh, forward tilt, uh, it increased the attack range near the hands, adjusted the launch angle, and, uh, increased, increased hit detection, so hitbox would be out for longer, a uh, different, slightly different, um, launch angle, and then, um, bigger hitbox near his hands, so that's pretty good. I, th I think it's pretty good for, uh, his F tilt. Then his down smash attack comes out faster with, uh, increased attack speed there, and then, uh, Longer hit detection. So yeah, his down smash will uh, be active for longer. So th that's a pretty solid buff there. This forward air has inc has a bigger hitbox at the beginning of the of the attack, which is definitely cool. So, yeah, definitely be good for his uh, forward air to hit because it's a solid. Yeah, his forward air is a solid aerial. But then the big change we need to talk about is his down special. This is actually a very big change because um, so the the, the change to the down special is that um. It extends the time until the banana peel can be thrown again after it has initially been thrown. What this means is that because because there's more uh, because this is now a wait more of a wait time for the banana peel to be re uh, rethrown and regrabbed. Um, this basically this effectively patches out the Diddy Kong Infinite, the uh, the pyramid scheme. So yeah, so the Diddy Kong Infinite is no longer in the game. I'm pretty, I'm 90% sure. I've seen, I've seen a lot of people talk about that it's not in the game anymore. I personally don't know how to do the Infinite. Like, I, I see how the Infinite works, but I've never actually, you know, tried it, because I'm not the best with Diddy. But the Infinite being out of the game is kind of big, because um, if you get caught in the Infinite, then it's kind of a really big yikes, because there's nothing you can do about it. So, kind of good that that is either gone, or it's either gone or it's a lot harder to land. So... I think that's, that's definitely probably one of the most um, probably one of the most important changes in the patch, if not the most important change. But yeah, that's still definitely um, something important that I wanted to uh, 
definitely hot spotlight for sure as we're going through here. Next up, Sonic. Sonic got a final smash uh, change. Made the opponent's uh, movement slower during the initial slowdown period and uh, a bigger hitbox when initiating the attack. So, yeah, Sonic's final smash got buffed, which is pretty nice. Pretty nice for Sonic. His, his final smash is still probably going to be kind of bad, but I mean, it is what it is. And next up, Kane DDD got some buffs. Yeah, bu buffing a big boy right here, which we do love to see. So first off, his up tilt has uh, does more damage and uh, sends and has increased knockback, which is nice. It could definitely, be, yeah, his up tilt is definitely a solid, so um, that could definitely be really good. His down tilt, which is you know the, the famous uh, lay, the famous like you know laying animation, the rolling and laying animation, um, has a different launch angle now. Hopefully, it's a launch angle that could lead into combos. That could be pretty cool. And uh, his forward air has has uh, more knockback. Yeah, more knockback on the forward air could be good. Definitely making it um, slightly better as a kill option. And then his up air attack. Um, his up air has extended the launches into the final attack. Another solid ki kill option with having that uh, extra knockback. So yeah, giving King DDD some uh, slightly better kill options, which is pretty good. And then lastly, his uh, neutral B, which is uh, the inhale. So the inhale comes out faster. Yeah, it comes out probably a few frames faster, and then um, has an extra has more range. So yeah, the inhale has more range. Uh, uh, well, specifically on the ground, it has more range, which can definitely be pretty good. It kind of sucks that, that the increased range wasn't a universal buff for uh, for in, in on the ground and in the air, but it is it is what it is, honestly. But um, yeah, because since the one in the air is used um, probably a lot more than the one on the ground. All right, so then we have another final smash um, buff. We have Olimar. Whose uh, final smash now uh, has increased high damage attack range when exploding and increased the power of the explosion. So at the end of Olimar's final smash is just more powerful now, basically, and uh, has a bigger range of uh, it has a bigger uh, range of effect. So that's pretty. That's still pretty. That's still pretty good for uh, Olimar. Okay, so now we have some villager. Um, yeah, now we have some uh, villager buffs, which definitely is interesting because the animal. I think Isabel also got some stuff because the Animal Crossing characters are uh, they're definitely not the best in Smash, so it's good to see that they got uh, some positive changes here. So first off, uh, is neutral attack, which I assume is his jab, um, made it easier to uh, hit multiple times, which is good. Then uh, his up tilt attack, um, once again. The, the attacks link better, and also this change is kind of, I feel like this change might be a little big. Uh, makes makes the arm and head invincible while attacking, so the, so his up tail has invincibility frames, which, depending on how good, I don't actually know how good it is as a combo starter, but if it's good as a combo starter, then that's going to actually be pretty good to have that, uh, make the arm and the head, and the head invincible during the up tilt. Alright, then for his up smash, um, the fireworks do more damage and um, have some extra launch distance. Which can definitely be pretty good. Yeah, I know the firework can be solid. I don't think it's his best, um, like smash attack. But um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's his best smash attack. But it could definitely still be very good. Maybe for like stages with smaller ceilings, or if he can catch an opponent, or, or yeah, or if the villager play can catch their opponent. All right, and then up air extended launch distance. That'll be good for once again killing off the top, um, catching someone while they're landing, which can be good. So, like maybe you can like. Um, like if you catch them with an up smash and then they don't die, then you can hit them with that up air, and then you can kill them towards the top of the stage. That could be pretty good. Then villager's down air um, comes out faster, so that could definitely be pretty good. With uh, that could be pretty good. Yeah, I think the most like when I'm fighting villagers, I see them use down air a lot for landing, which can definitely be pretty good, so that they don't get you know like up aired by someone. I mean, it depends on what character you're using, like because some characters have really good up airs, like Palutena and whatnot. So. I think it just depends on uh, whoever they're whoever they're fighting and how the uh, how the hitboxes work. But I've seen I've seen the villager down air beat out up air hitboxes uh, plenty of times. So definitely good cool that comes out faster for villager mains though. And then and the villager down special got a bunch of stuff here. So uh, reduce vulnerability when planting it, when planting the tree seed, and then uh, so less end lag when planting the tree seed, less end lag when watering the seed, and then. Um, the axe has more. Um, the, the axe has more knockback now, and then the axe does more shield damage. Yeah, the axe is definitely really good. Like it's kind of it's kind of cool that if the villager plants the tree, he just has the axe until until the tree isn't there anymore. So like yeah, because that axe that axe is powerful. Like that I've seen the axe do some damage to people. So it's definitely good to see that. Okay, so then Mega Man 
got the same sort of basic movement change that um, Ivysaur did. So once again, um, ma making de making like basic stuff universal among the characters is really good. Yeah, I definitely think it's really good to make them unique in their kits as opposed to like making some characters just better than others in like the basic ways in like the basic ways in the game. So I think I think once again that's a good change in my opinion. Then next up, so We Fit Trainer got some stuff. So starting with We Fit Trainer, I don't know much about We Fit Trainer. I don't play this character, but um, We Fit Trainer down tilt um has adjusted launch angle. Maybe that makes it a better combo tool. I'm not sure. Um. Then up smash attack has uh, increased attack speed, which definitely good. Ma ma yeah, making the up smash a, 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 a little uh, faster. It's definitely a solid. Uh, I think it's definitely a solid option for killing. I've I've seen uh, Wii Fits go for up smash, so yeah, that can definitely be good. Uh, down smash reduce vulner reduce end lag. So yeah, down smash makes down smash a little safer, which is nice. And then uh, the Wii Fit forward air um, has yeah has less end lag. Um, Less end lag and less end lag, less end lag while landing and using the move. So that can definitely be uh, pretty interesting there. And lastly, for the uh, salute the sun, um, salute the sun has extended launch distance, so more knockback on, on that, which is pretty cool. Plus with the heal, honestly, that move having extended uh, knockback is actually pretty good, considering that that move, if it's fully charged, that move can heal you, and if they get sent further, then that means you have more time to charge it. So. I mean, hey, it, it does work out. And then the final smash ha uh, got buffed with uh, bigger attack range for the large so for the large solo at the end, and an extended uh, launch distance for the large solo at the end. So, yeah, pretty good, pretty uh, standard stuff there for the final smash. Then um, Rosalina, yeah, Ros Rosalina and Luma uh, final smash got buffed more. Yeah, more damage, uh, shorten the distance the opponent can move with hit stun shuffling when repeatedly hit. So, they made. I think I think what this means is that they made it harder to di out. Of Rosalina's final smash, which is good for the good for that final smash, and extended launch distance for the final attack, which is definitely good because yeah, because Rosalina's final smash isn't that great. All right, and then Little Mac. Little Mac got changes. Yeah, Little Mac got changes, but his sh yeah, yeah, Little Mac got the changes that um Ivysaur got as well as the change that uh, the Pits got, and while that's great and all to make everything universal, this is not what Little Mac needs at all. Like. <laughs> Little Mac is, I, I, I still think Little Mac is the worst character in the game. I know some people might think it's some other characters like Ganondorf or whatever, but I still think Little Mac is the worst in the game, and these are not at all what he needed. <laughs> so, yeah, so th there's that with Little Mac. Just uh, this was basic changes, and now Palutena is on this list. Her f and Palutena, I believe, don't qu um, I'll correct myself if we go through here, but I think she's the only Final Smash that got nerfed. I don't know why they felt the need to nerf her final smash, but they were just like, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, you, you, yes, you know, so someone, someone probably on Nintendo, on Nintendo, they were probably playing some friendlies items on Final Smash Media or something like that, and someone got hit by Palu's uh, final smash, and they were like, we need to nerf this. Yeah, because they just, they, um, shortened the, uh, the act, they shortened the, the, um, the amount of time surrounding opponents are slowed at the start of the move, and they decreased the, uh, they decreased the range of the hitbox of the uh, yeah they they short this they shortened the hitbox of the black hole. Yeah, I, I don't know why, but I mean, I guess they did that. Oh sure. <laughs> yeah, so that's for Palutena. Then uh, for Pac-Man and Duck Hunt, they uh they got the breaking falls vulnerability uh made universal with the other fighters, which is good. Yeah, so definitely good on them for sure. Then next up we have Corrin. Corrin getting buffs is actually really good because that Corrin needed them. Corrin needed buffs like pretty badly. So yeah, let's start. So for uh so yeah, so for Corrin's uh forward smash, um there's more damage for the tip's attack range. Um and it yeah, we, we have, yeah, more, we have more damage yeah, more damage from the tip of the uh of the lance. Increase attack yeah, just so a bigger hitbox for the tip and then um Increase the opponent's downtime by hitting a shield, which means this uh, Korn's forward smash has more shield stun now. Then for Korn's forward air, um, Korn's forward air does more damage and uh, has the same launch distance, which can be good for you know maybe letting some other stuff kill, which can definitely be good. Then for Korn's back air, um, which is like the sort of wing flapping back. I've never played Fire Emblem, whatever. I didn't play any Fire Emblem games, so I uh, I don't really know what they are with for Corrin, but it looks like wings and like she kind of like flaps. 
the wings together for a for a hit. Um, but yeah, but for the back air, the um, yeah, so more damage when hitting with the beginning of the attack, and then uh, more launch distance when hitting with the beginning of the attack, which would definitely be pretty good because yeah, corn mains definitely do use back air to kill. So it definitely, yeah, it definitely, it definitely seems like a solid change. Then for corn up air, um. Yeah, more damage and extended launch distance, which is good because yeah, Korn's up there is actually pretty solid, and giving it uh, more more kill potential is honestly really good for the character. And then lastly for Korn, uh, or side B, which is the, which is you know the the lance pin. Um, so it has less end lag for the lance attacks, uh, more more knockback for the kick when hitting with the beginning of the kick, and then uh, less end lag when jumping after stabbing. So. Definitely pretty, yeah. Definitely, these are very strong changes for the side B because corn side B can be very powerful if you uh, use it correctly. So yeah, that is corn. Then next up, a character no one thought was gonna get buffed. Not even me. I think no one thought this character was gonna get buffed. We got Bayo buffs, which is crazy. <laughs> it's honestly kind of crazy that Bayo got buffed. But to start off, um, so first off, um, Bayo's forward tilt three. Um, has yeah. So the third hit of Bay of Bayonetta's forward tilt has reduced vul has less end lag, which will definitely be good because a lot of Bayo stuff is has been kind of laggy in this game. So still less lag on that, which is good. Then Bayonetta's up tilt has uh yeah it comes out uh, probably a few frames faster. Um yeah the uh it the uh, the hits of up tilt link together a bit easier with it hitting multiple times. Um, increased attack range of the last attack, so it's just gonna. So uh, the hitbox is a bit bigger on that last attack, which is the the upper hit, I, I believe. And then, uh, and the hit detection lasts for longer, so uh, that means just more active frames on the up tilt, which can definitely be pretty good. Then Bena's F smash has uh, more launch distance, which is very good because uh, Bayo struggles to kill in ultimate like really badly. So having like having a move that um, having a move that has some extra extra launch distance as well as a smash attack can definitely be pretty good and increasing amount of time hit detection lasts so yeah the F smash will also last for uh, longer although yeah although I feel like Bayo is still gonna have the issues with uh, certain moves clanking with uh, with F smash so that that that'll be fun um, then we have uh, yeah then we have uh, Bayonetta side B which is heel slide uh, which is Bayonetta's probably best approaching tool um, just got less end lag. Less end lag when used on the ground and less end lag when kicking upwards. So that's definitely gonna be helpful. It probably still is punishable, but um I will have to, you know, test that out once uh when I do more friendlies with Mike once he uh finishes, you know, the min min craze that's happening right now. Alright, and then for Bayonetta's up B, Witch Twist. Um so Witch Twist uh has shortened it shortened the distance the opponent can move with uh hit stun, shuffling when repeatedly hit, which means it's now. Um, I don't know if it's impo if it's impossible or it's just a lot harder now. But apparently, it's a lot harder to SDI out of the uh, out of the witch twist. So that means if you're trying to SDI out of Bayo combos, you're gonna have to SDI out of ABK. So that's definitely important to know for uh, for SDIing. Yeah. So ho hopefully, uh, hopefully that can hopefully I can uh, hopefully that's not gonna screw me over uh, when fighting Mike. But well, I mean, we'll see what happens. And then lastly, Bayonetta's final smash got some uh, got some uh, buffs. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, shortened the launch distance. Oh wait, oh wait, oh wait, no, that's actually kind of a nerf. Yeah, shortened launch di launch distance for fighters that uh, did not get instantly KO'd after Gamora's last hits and adjusted launch angle. Okay, actually, that's a nerf. Never mind. Yeah, so Palutena wasn't even. Palu and Bayo's final smash just got nerfed. All right, then that's fine. <laughs> Whatever. All right, so then Ridley's down special increased uh, increased power for the tips attack range for the skewer. Honestly, not a big change. Yeah, honestly, not a big change at all. <laughs> so yeah, that's really then King K rule. I'm gonna take a sip of water before I say this. You know, I apologize for the video being on, going on for so long. I do want to go through each and every one of these. So uh, yeah, we are approaching the end though. But yeah, I'm gonna take a sip of water because I'm very excited about K rule. All right, so for King K rule. Yeah, King K rule. I know I I know I just want to go and talk about this one right now, but I'm gonna go down in order. But um, yeah, so sorry, K. Rule, his dash attack has uh, more knockback, which it can be better. It can be sol more solid for a kill option, and then increasing amount of time hit detection lasts for the high damage range. So yeah, so uh, 
more active frames for that high damage range, which is definitely pretty good for the sweet spot of it. This up smash has increased power and extended launch distance. That can definitely be good for uh, certain like conversions, like if you get like a crown hit into up smash for killing, or like if you bury them and time their mashing and then up smash them as they're jumping out of the uh, of the berry. That can be pretty good. Although for King 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 K rule up smash, you always want to hit with that first hit because if you hit with the second hit, like that landing hit. That hit doesn't do anything. That hit is awful. So, yeah, there's that. Then King K. Rool's back, back throw, adjusted launch angle. The launch angle doesn't seem too different. Like, I, I tested out back throw. It, did, it doesn't seem too different uh, than what it's been. So it wasn't really that big of a change for the back throw. And then his side B, which is his crown. Um, it made it harder for... Yeah, it made his super armor just a little better um, on the crown. Which is definitely pretty cool. Because crown is uh, one, of his, one of King K. Rool's main neutral tools. So, it's definitely good that he has a bit more super armor when using the crown. But then this last buff right here, this is amazing. And I'm going to explain why. King K. Rule increased durability of his of the belly, because King K. Rule's belly is really is really good. Yeah, I do think belly armor is pretty good, until it breaks. Like, like, in theory, belly armor is amazing. But in practice, it's good until it breaks. And when it breaks, you lose a stock, basically. But with increased durability... I don't, that gives me more wiggle room to use the belly armor. I don't know what the exact number is now. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to try to find that out. But having any increased durability of the belly is definitely going to be really good for King K. Rule. And I've been playing King K. Rule since the game came out. So I'm definitely really happy with any buffs he, he gets. Like, I know he got buffs in, uh, in the Terry patch. And then now he's getting buffs here. I don't know if he got anything in the Bilos patch. I don't think he did. But yeah, that's for King K. Rule. Then Isabel, yeah, Isabel got some buffs as well. Um, so for her dash attack, um, her dash attack co um, comes out faster, which can definitely be really good for it's definitely good for dash attacks to be coming out faster for some of these characters. And her up tilt has less end lag, which can be good. Yeah, I believe her up tilt is a decent, could be a decent combo tool. Um, and her up smash increases attack. I think her up smash. I don't know if this is true or not because I don't play Isabel, but I think her up smash is kind of garbage. It doesn't have that much range. But, I mean, I. I with it being faster, I guess it could be um, utilized a little bit. Then uh, the up air is extended launch distance. Similar up air to, to uh, it's a similar up air to villagers, so that's still pretty good for killing off the top. Then down air has uh, increased attack speed. So once it's similar, yeah, sim both of those similar to villager. And then up smash. At, oh no, it's that's Incineroar. Never mind. I was gonna say, wait a minute, I wasn't saying up smash twice. But no, it's just for Incineroar. Because Incineroar also did get buffs, so definitely uh, pretty solid for that as well. So. For Incineroar, um, his up smash um, has extend has more knockback, so that could be uh, another good option for uh, for killing. And then um, then for his grab, uh, his his grab dash grab and pivot grabs are all faster, which is going to be really good, especially for him being a heavy, getting uh, just a little more speed is going to definitely be good for him. Then his forward throw has extended launch distance, so making that a bit of a better a bit of a better uh, killing tool. Which I mean, he has his back. He has his back throw, but like, if you're facing, if you're facing the ledge, then you're probably gonna want to go for. You're probably gonna want to go for uh forward throw unless there unless your opponent's not like an abnormally high percent, which probably won't happen because Incineroar is a heavy and does a lot of damage already. And then Incineroar side B, um the uh the I believe it's the Alolan Whip. Um so, yeah. So this increases the speed of the grab. So, um. Yeah, so probably less frames for it to do the grab, and then extended launch distance for when the lariat hits, which is pretty good, honestly, for uh, for Incineroar. You know, cause, yeah, I mean, side B is definitely um, a pretty good tool for him, so that's definitely good. And then lastly, for, for Incineroar, Revenge has less end lag, and it increases the power-up amount when the moves exceed. So Revenge is actually more powerful now, which can be, kind of be scary if Incineroar, if Incineroar is really good with using Revenge and getting that timing down. All right, and now on to the last few uh, adjustments here. The last big, well, the last big character adjustments is our uh, Piranha Plant, which I think I believe these are also his first adjustments since his release. So Piranha Plant's up tilt um, has an adjusted launch angle and uh, comes out uh, probably a few frames faster, which is good. Yeah, a lot of this is just increased. Uh, is just probably uh, coming out a few frames faster. So up tilt has that down smash. Also, has that. his down smash can be uh, pretty solid as well. Forward air, his forward is all right. His back air. Um, has extended launch distance, which is, you know, that's fine. Um, it's a bit of a laggy move, so it, you know, ha it having more launch distance can definitely be pretty good. 
And the up air has uh, more da it does more damage and uh, sends them further, which that can definitely be pretty good for uh, for getting some kills off the top there as well. So yeah, those are the piranha plant um, adjustments there. Yeah, those are his buffs. Pretty pretty solid for the plant though. And lastly, we had to have some uh, some adjustments here for uh, a few of the DLC characters. So heroes da heroes down B um, made it easier to hit multiple times with kaboom. Now originally I. Found, I found this like change to be ridiculous, in all honesty, because yeah, because heroes that because I even before this happened, like as soon as I saw what all of hero spells did, I thought that kaboom was the best one, and I still I still stand by that kaboom is hero's best spell. So I was wondering, I I asked uh, someone, I asked Mister Infinity, he comes out to my stream sometimes, and he's he's a cool buddy of mine, because he mains hero. I asked I, I asked how how come kaboom? I was like. I was like, what was wrong with Kaboom before? And um, he basically said that um, it was it was easy. He said it was easier than you think to uh, sh to be able to shield it, like shield like the second hit of it or whatever, so you wouldn't actually get the big explosion. But now, because it's easier, it, you know, because they made it more consistent, um, you either have to have really good reaction time to uh, shield it, or it, oh, and if but if you don't, if you don't dodge it, then um, then you kind of just get hit with Kaboom and you kind of just die. So that's definitely a really good buff for Hero. Then for Banjo, um, his uh, get his get his edge attacks increase the backward attack range. Yeah, assuming for the get up attack, that's a weird that's a weird buff, but I mean whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird buff for Banjo, but I mean I, I mean I guess Banjo mains will take it. The backwards range is a little the backwards hit of uh, get up attack that just has a little more range. And for Terry, Terry's final smash got buffed with just some extra knockback. So that is patch 8.0 for Smash Ultimate. The first patch in uh, five months. Yeah, we got Byleth around this time in January. It's been yeah almost exactly five months um, since the Byleth patch. So yeah, let me know in the comments what y'all thought of this patch. Um, and thank y'all for watching. Um, remember to uh, remember to hit that sub button. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, with that, I will see you all next time. And hopefully tomorrow, I should be uploading the uh, Min Min video.